Hey, what's up everybody? Uh, POV here. Just uh, picked some grass clippings for my cow right here. Moo! Do you like grass, buddy? He's, he's got, got a piece there. Anyway, so uh, the, the chickens and the ducks. Let's see what they do when I, when I toss this grass in here. Let's see just what happens. Let's see precisely what happens. So yeah, they like it. Important part of their daily diet is to throw in a couple handfuls of fresh grass clippings. The ducks just eat it ravenously. The chickens eat it a little bit more hesitantly. I mean, they do like it and they eat it, but they're more so looking for bugs that are on the grass, whereas the ducks are eating the grass itself. And the chickens, like I said, they're eating the grass itself too, but they're not like ravenously devouring it like the, like the ducks are. And that little tiny duck over there, I don't know what he's doing. He's just, you know, doing his own thing. He's kind of a lone, uh, a lone duck over there. Anyways, reading about, uh, learning about chickens more and more and getting to this idea of, well, how little can you rely on the feed store? Obviously, growing your own corn is a lot of work and all that other stuff. Um, but step by step, you know, so one thing I started doing, fermenting corn. So this is uh, cracked corn. Rather than just feeding it to them dry, I calculate the amount that's like half of their feed in one day, like whatever, a quarter, a cup per bird per day, and take half of that, assuming I'm feeding them um, half of half of their grain and corn, and I soak it in a bucket for four days to let it ferment, and I feed it them. And they were eating it, they did like it, they haven't eaten all of it yet, but they will. Uh, they will eat most of it. And basically fermenting the corn lets it... Um, it increases its caloric value. Basically, it breaks it down a little bit, makes it easier for them to digest. They like it more, it's wetter, they get more hydration. So all around, it's just better for them. Um, and it means you have to feed them slightly less corn because I don't know exactly what percent it increases the caloric content, but it definitely goes up a little bit. Um, at first, they'll eat more of it because they like it so much, and then afterwards, they'll naturally eat less. So that's one thing, all right? Step two is eventually I'm gonna get a black soldier fly larvae bin where you put your kitchen compost into that bin, the black soldier fly larvae grow, and you feed that, that to the chickens, all right? So then other things I'm doing, like just feeding them grass, um, other little things, I don't, you know, my goal is not to completely replace the feed store during non-apocalypse times. Uh, it's just to get to the point where if uh, the, the grid were to basically go down, as it were, I would at least have options. Like, So I'm going to have a small corn plot. I just got some heirloom seeds, some heirloom corn seeds, variety called uh, something like Trucker's White Favorite, Trucker's Favorite White Corn. It's a dent corn. Uh, it's supposed to do really well in like extreme heat drought conditions. I want to plant a very, very small corn plot uh, just to have it. And hey, so if at any point we get to the point where the feed stores can't provide us anymore, the grocery stores can't provide us anymore, at least then I can, oh, now I'm going to expand my corn plot to four set times its size when things get really serious. There's no point in being 100% sustainable when you're, you're going to suffer for it. Um, yeah, the bald rooster is finally starting to grow in its feathers. Mostly the one over there. I don't know what's going on with him, but... He's, uh, yeah, some of them are getting pretty big. And anyways, the more I read about chickens, the more I realize... Now, some of you are, are watching this thing, oh, why don't you just let them free range? Can't they just provide all their food? The math, you got to think about the math here. If you just have five chickens, sure, you can let them free range. They might be able to provide a lot of their food um, from the land. They're going to grow slower. They're going to lay fewer eggs. You're not going to get any of them if the eggs is what you care about, because they're just going to lay them out wherever. Um, unless you're, you know, some people get lucky and you can get them to lay in the coop even if they're free raging all day, some, sometimes. Um, so, but the fact is if you have lots of chickens, like any reasonable number of chickens that you would need if you were actually producing them for food, which most people aren't, um, if you were actually doing that, you would find that they would need to roam really far to get all their caloric needs, which means they would be exercising a lot more, they would grow slower, and they would be much more likely to get taken out by predators, whether it's the neighbor's dog or owls or hawks or things like that. Uh, so you run into the situation where it just it just wouldn't work anymore. Um, um, and you kind of do have to provide them some food. Now mine are in a pen because it's a breed that I want to maintain uh, the genetic purity of. Um, so once I have more than 25, which is what this is uh, um, sized out for, and the coop I'm going to build along the side of it, um, then uh, I can start letting groups of them free range. So, <laughs> duck loves his muddy water.
and you know got to dig a pond for the ducks so i got to realize like any any type of poultry operation is just very dependent on you being able to provide calories for them unless you have such a small amount like i said if you have a, like a joke operation if you have a, f a few chickens a few ducks you know a few things and you're not actually per you know uh, relying on them for a good portion of your calories then of course you can say things like oh i just let mine free range and i don't have to feed them anything great good for you right now if you have a big family and you're actually trying to produce a large number of birds uh it just becomes crazy to think that you'll be able to do that easily uh in a grid down situation um without a neighbor who's a grain farmer and the ability to produce all the stuff without machines and gasoline um if a solar flare hit or something like that so anyhow uh, that's why, obviously, a much more efficient opera, um, option is the um, uh, ruminant animals like sheep and cows and goats and things like that. So it's like, hmm, maybe I should direct my efforts towards fencing off the, the entire land, perimeter fencing, um, and focus on that rather than uh, getting a real big poultry operation, which was never really my goal anyways. Just wanted to kind of try this out and see how it goes. So I'm going to keep doing the fermented corn. I'm going to start the black soldier fly larvae and feeding them other alternative things. I'm going to try to grow a small corn plot, see how that goes, start introducing some other stuff, um, and try to be as sustainable as possible. But I have no, you know, goal of growing 100% of their feed unless I really have to, in which case, in a year or two, I'd probably be able to make it work. Right now, I wouldn't be able to, if I had to. Anyways, that's all, folks. Hope you all have a great day. Return to the land.org.